Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, today on uh, this session that is part of the NIA series where we are hosting Azure Read. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Where we are hosting Azure leaders and, um, and, and MVPs from across the region to learn from them all about the latest in technology. And in today's session, we're coming here together to learn uh, all about uh, Terraform and um, and, and um, on, on Azure and all the fundamentals. That, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening. Uh, that is used um, as an infrastructure, as a code, and it will help you make your life easy in, in, in an enterprise uh, environment. I'm sure you know me by now. I'm Hassan Hassine. I'm the program manager for Microsoft Reactor in Abu Dhabi, and the reactor here in Abu Dhabi is. Um, is, is physically located in um, Abu Dhabi, but it's also open to all the members and communities across the Middle East and Africa. And we're working very closely with everyone to make sure that um, we're reaching and, and upskilling and enabling uh, everyone who is passionate about technology across the region uh, access um, our sessions and enjoy and benefit and for listening to the feedback that we're getting uh, from everyone. So. Uh, excited to have you all with us. Uh, the session is recorded as usual and it is available um, on our YouTube channel. It will be available in the next 24 to 48 hours, I would say. So um, enjoy today's session. Ask as many questions as you wish to our uh, expert speaker. And um, don't worry, you will have it on demand uh, on the YouTube channel. So you will have a chance to review it later. As always, it's a great pleasure to host Satish, who is an award-winning uh, information technology professional with a decade of experience. He's an Office Server and uh, Services MVP um, award winner uh, for the years 2014 till 2021 for his exceptional technical contributions. He specializes in cloud, uh, Microsoft Cloud, uh, Office 365, uh, Microsoft Exchange, and he has been doing uh, a number of projects worldwide in designing, supporting, and implementing messaging and virtualization infrastructures uh, for medium-sized businesses to, to large enterprises. And uh, further to that, he's a cloud architect and a technical advisor for various startups, and uh, you can visit his technical uh, blog, azure365pro.com. I'm going to link that. Uh, in the chat for you to visit. As always, uh, do not forget to check in. Um, the check-in uh, page uh, can be found on this short link, and then you will use the event ID for today's session. And that is your way to access the event resources and the survey. Um, this will help you, first of all, uh, continue the journey after today's session. Uh, there are some uh, modules recommended by Satish that will help you uh, continue the journey and not stop just you know after today's session, one hour session, and then that's it. If you want to continue and do um, more learning around um, uh, the topic, then you will need to follow the modules recommended on, on there. And also there is the um, survey, the reactor survey uh, link is there where you can send us feedback about today's session and also about the sessions that you would love to see uh, at the reactors in the future. This will help us program uh, and bring to you sessions and topics that you would love um, more. So please uh, take a moment after today's session to do that uh, survey. And before we begin, uh, this is a, a standard one, and, and you've been seeing this a lot, I'm sure. But in short, this is a reminder that we're all coming here to learn, coming from different backgrounds. So let's be aware of others friendly and patient at all time and welcoming and respectful, open to all viewpoints and questions, understanding of each other's differences and kind and considerate to others at all time. That's pretty much all uh, that I have for the introduction. Uh, thank you, Satesh, for uh, joining us today <clears throat> on, on, on today's session and um, taking part in this uh, MIA series. We are always uh, happy to have you in the reactor from the early days where we were um, like doing in person and uh, you were uh, like one of the first uh, 
uh, MVPs, I would say, uh, that uh, collaborated with us. So always a great pleasure to be working with you. And uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I can see your screen right now. All right, that's all for me for the introduction. Sure, thank you, thank, thank you, you so, so much for so your, your great that. introduction, uh, Sam. You know, I'm truly grateful for the, all the opportunities uh, speaking via reactor uh, let's uh, great, do a great session together whoever is joining and spending your uh, valuable time uh, with us we are truly grateful for this you know because spending your time with us to uh, learn for yourself and you know it's, it's a, a good thing for us and definitely you know we will do something uh, great together and we will learn uh, something nice today yeah. so so yeah, so let's let's talk about uh, Terraform on Azure today. So I don't want to spend much on slides usually, but this topic, uh, I don't think I can do it uh, without uh, slides. So, and also I, I would like to have this as an uh, interactive session. So if you have any doubts, please put it on chat. Uh, we can have the doubts cleared then and there so that uh, we can have a smooth session and when you, when you go out of this session, I, I really want to uh, get uh, want you guys to learn something new because it's not it doesn't mean like I know everything, but whatever I, I am learning uh, throughout my career, I am just trying to share the knowledge then and there so that uh, we we learn together and grow together. You know, this is the approach we are taking. So we run a lot of groups. I run blogs. I'm MVP for many years. So I share my knowledge always. And if you guys have any other thoughts, please put it on the chat. If you have doubts, put it on the chat. Or if you have any clarifications, let's uh, talk it out uh, so that we can have a great discussion and let's start the session. OK, so today the session will be on Terraform and Azure. Uh, Terraform and Azure fundamental session. We will not go into like uh, too much advanced topics. Uh, we will go into a overall uh, Terraform session. So let's consider what is uh, Terraform. You know, so the first point is what is Terraform? And Terraform is the infrastructure as a code. Infrastructure as a code is kind of a buzzword we guys are using. You know, in any company you enter now, uh, have you guys implemented uh, infrastructure as a code? Have you guys implemented DevOps? Have you guys uh, applying AI? So this is kind of buzzwords and it's also good for the environment, but uh, you know, so it's very uh, predominantly used nowadays in the US Middle, e US Middle East market. Middle East market is kind of booming with Terraform. Uh, more companies are starting to adopt uh, Terraform, uh, US, uh, uh, UK, and, and most com more companies have already ad adopted there. So, so let's, it's, you know, why I'm saying this is it's, it's more important to know these type of topics nowadays. So that's why I chose this topic. And we have implemented in quite a few projects and it's it's completely uh, stable. Things are great with Terraform. So so Terraform is infrastructure as a code and infrastructure as a code. Why we need infrastructure as a code, you know? So because anytime we can just uh, use any sort of PowerShell or AZ login or ARM templates and we can use uh, Terraform, right? So we will go into that why we really need Terraform. We will. Uh, we will sh we will uh, discuss those things as well. So what is Terraform? Terraform is infrastructure as a code. Uh, so like infrastructure is in the code in the sense like you have you can specify like five to six lines or whatever you want to create. You can specify as a code and you can push it through any uh, Git system and you can uh, populate the infrastructure like a, like a software product, you know, so so that that is called Terraform and and why, why and ARM templates and biceps from Microsoft, you know why? So why Microsoft is also recommending uh, Terraform in few instances like why ARM temp so ARM templates and biceps uh, bicep is a new product released by Microsoft and ARM templates is been there for a while. The JSON form templates. So uh, so all these uh, Microsoft products are there, but still Terraform is booming in the side because ARM templates is like uh, too complicated and if there is any error on these JSON files, if you miss any kind of a double quotes or if you miss some uh, formatting issue, it's it's extremely hard to troubleshoot. So ARM templates uh, is extremely hard. So Microsoft came up uh, with a new initiative called uh, Bicep this year. So Bicep is like is kind of uh, a simplest form. 
so that people can utilize infrastructure as a code and also bicep is also providing like you can take an existing arm templates we have a lot of arm templates uh, deployment uh, in many infrastructures, so you can take these ARM templates and convert to Bicep and start using it. But Bicep is in like early stages, so hopefully it will get matured over these years and and it will take some time. And why we need Terraform, you know, so why we need Terraform is like why can't I run like PowerShell commands and start populating or I can use some AZ uh, commands and start populating the infrastructure, you know, why we need Terraform. So when you start learning with uh, terraform you know it's kind of a more simple product and and easy to understand code and i'm also kind of a non developer background uh, i'm not a core developer i'm, I'm i started my career with uh, infrastructure and all this so even for me terraform is kind of a piece of cake for me to understand and start using it in a couple of months and uh, mature the code it's it's much easier for me so i felt like it's extremely important for anyone any consultant uh, to know this product because if you're planning to uh, work on any cloud platform like google cloud or uh, aws or azure terraform will be your uh, first preference nowadays because any any cloud you're planning to use uh, terraform will support you and for any consultant you know so for any consultant let's let's consider he wants to deploy the same type of infrastructure uh, earlier days, if I want like five VMs or uh, five uh, Kubernetes clusters or five application gateways or any sort of uh, deployment I want to make, uh, let's consider I'm an external consultant. I, I know that this is how my product works, like one app gateway, one Azure Web App Service, one storage account and uh, any any form of product will come into like coupling of Azure products or coupling of like uh, AWS products. You can build like a simple uh, like a simple uh, code. It's for a consultant, so you can reuse the same code on all your uh, projects for implementation. This is on a consultant point of view uh, that that uh, he needs Terraform and on a on a learner point of view, let's consider in olden days, maybe if you want to deploy like five virtual machines and if you want to test something and remove it, like I want like uh, four 2012 R2 VMs and five uh, 2019 VMs and I want to populate this infrastructure to create some lab and come out of it and delete it. Now I can do it like in like five to fifteen dollars. What I can do is I can populate all these virtual machines in using Terraform and I want to test few things. I, I, pop, I create the scenario, test it and delete and destroy the infrastructure in like a few minutes. So, so this flexibility uh, which Terraform gives is something amazing and it's like anybody can understand and it's not kind of a complicated uh, product. It's definitely a, a good uh, piece of uh, technology like piece of code which we which I would feel like uh, any developer or a consultant or any any IT background guy has to know this so that I feel this is the future because you you work on you work with the employer you know so employer maybe work with AWS or he might be using Google Cloud or he might be on Azure so like 95% of organizations going to use any form of cloud uh, definitely at one point at least if you use if you know one infrastructure as a code product so that you can use that to interact with any cloud technology you know so for example also there is a misconception in in terms of uh, uh, multi cloud technologies so what is the the misconception is like i use terraform so terraform will support all the clouds so so people have a misconception that I write, write like 10 lines of code and I can reuse the same lines on all the cloud platforms. Uh, the answer is no, because like you're just using Terraform as an interactive medium. Uh, like, like, it, like Terraform builds your uh, backend ARM template. You know, it just interacts with the backend uh, templates of Azure, uh, APIs of, of Azure, and populate this infrastructure for you. So, if you want to interact with AWS, it comes with a different set of commands. So, in the right side, it's a very basic command on creating a resource group. Uh, so, if it's if it's something on uh, AWS or Google, these commandlets would change. So, the, you have to rewrite uh, as suitable for your uh, cloud technology. So. So in this slide, what why what is Terraform? We covered as infrastructure as a 
a code and also ARM templates uh, is kind of adjacent, much complicated to use and BICEP is kind of a, a new infrastructure as a code initiative coming up with Microsoft and it will be used only on Azure at this point. And why we need Terraform? Like ter Terraform is the future for infrastructure as a code at this point. Uh, so it will interact with any cloud technology. Uh, Terraform is more stable and uh, they are releasing more uh, amount of new versions every day and Terraform with multi cloud so that you learn Terraform and you can interact with any cloud technology. Uh, the predominantly like you have to know how the cloud works and if you have to be really familiar with on how the GUI works uh, so that you can use uh, Terraform. Also why we need Terraform is one more thing is uh, why we need infrastructure as a code in the sense like let's consider in a in a proper DevOps environment you might see like 30 to 40 people working on an infrastructure. So let's consider if you are in a basic VMware environment and if you have like uh, 300 VMware administrators uh, the old that old concept is like each guy will have access to VMware and you put a change management system as a document and you get approved on a change management system. Uh, then you go to and change on your VMware, but you don't really have a track on what is the exact change. Even though you have like auditing systems or you can have like uh, logs collected into a centralized log system and you analyze the changes, but still like you cannot uh, protect the infrastructure uh, before applying and also you cannot get a real clear picture on what has been applied and how this can be reverted. So Terraform as it's kind of always a, a set of code and, and it can be pushed on a Git system. Git system is kind of a code repository. So any changes uh, it tracks into the versioning system so you can revert the infrastructure at any point of time. You know, so. So this is also uh, a booming thing that uh, that all the infrastructure has to be on a code point of view. So any changes can be tracked easily and it can be reverted. You know, so it's like it's you know it's not easy to implement at this point, but it can be implemented. We can uh, implement and it will run. But you need really good uh, amount of Terraform knowledge to manage these type of environments. But uh, this is kind of what we see is kind of foreseeing the future in kind of any industry who wants to have uh, all changes to be tracked and reverted and to have a stable infrastructure and and all the let's consider you built like five to six environments uh, in a proper Hyper-V environment or a VMware environment. It's really hard for a human uh, to create these environments in a proper uh, versions like each the test environment, UAT environment, all these environments cannot be identical at this point because somehow you will miss uh, somewhere uh, some settings and in order to track uh, over a period of time in any environment if you see that over a period of time that all these environments uh, go in a different form the test environment will be like more becoming more messy UAT becoming like a more change uh, the system will be more different so you lose track over a period of time at least when you have terraform i am not saying like if you have terraform you will not it will not become messy but at least you have control or you at least you have proper history uh, on what happened to this environment on like over the years right okay those things and so i hope this is covered and uh, let's check the next topics so so why companies need terraform uh, as i said earlier like if you have a like if you have more developers or if you have more infrastructure guys has to work on the same infrastructure so earlier in a in an on premises scenario what happens is you have a set of uh, network devices so it will be managed by network team and you have a set of uh, infrastructure uh, components like vmware and uh, you have like virtual machines and you have uh, load balancers so this can be managed by a different set of teams in on-premises world but when it comes to the cloud all are interlinked and people will call it as devops and all the people has to work together in the same set of uh, products right so let's consider the guy is going to deploy app gateway cannot be from networking team and like it's very hard like the storage guy will have access only to storage accounts so this concept 
is almost kind of gone nowadays because uh, it, it has to be kind of a DevOps team and people have to work together in order to formulate an architecture and implement. So in order to uh, like have a proper governance on top of this infrastructure, uh, only an infrastructure as a code can achieve this form of governance because so any sort of changes in the environment, uh, it can be tracked and all the teams can work together. All the teams can test things and implement on the production easily. So this is the uh, real advantage of Terraform. Uh, so that is the one thing. And and also in a, like in a consultant point of view, let's consider uh, we are seeing we are seeing like many kind of scripts like in a in a external consultant point of view. Like if you are formulating any kind of a project. Even in the design phase, let's consider your you need to have like a th three Kubernetes clusters, four app gateways, or uh, if you want to have like five to six storage accounts, which should not be internet facing. So all these can be uh, put into the Terraform code in the design phase uh, with the consultant so that when you go to the implementation phase, you just you just push the code and and the infrastructure gets populated. So it's extremely useful on a consultant point of view that if you want to implement anything on a customer facing environment, uh, you can implement the same set of code into your uh, lab or something and you just uh, change these values and you go to the customer environment and you implement it. So that's also it's a, a good thing on Terraform that Let's let's consider in a different scenario. You know, if in, irrespective of uh, what cloud the customer is using, uh, we don't have to worry. But you, you just need to have Terraform code for uh, each cloud for Google and Azure. If you have these set of codes, uh, so most preferred uh, cloud uh, is may, let's consider it's Azure. So if you have this uh, set of code. Uh, even let's consider if you want to do kind of a VNet pairing or anything to MongoDB databases or anything can be formulated in a predefined code so that uh, it can be modified as per the customer's environment and you can implement it, you know. So it's also another advantage we are seeing. So in order to uh, work with Terraform, we will do some uh, few uh, like examples so that we don't end with only slides. So I want I really want you I want to explain on how it works. So let's uh, let, let's see a little bit of uh, Terraform and installing Terraform and we will come to this uh, slides again. OK, so. Yeah. So other thing what we are seeing is. Uh, so. So what we are doing is uh, we are what we are opening is is the Visual Studio Code. Uh, so Visual Studio Code uh, for if anybody who is not using Visual Studio Code, uh, it's kind of uh, a normal like PowerShell ISC I would say because I'm I'm kind of a PowerShell back uh, background guy, so I'm comparing with uh, PowerShell ISC. Uh, so this is the new product from Microsoft. So people start using Visual Studio Code. Uh, so you can install it. It's a free product and it doesn't require any license. So, so let's do something and. So. Okay, okay. so let's go into uh, AZ logins. So. Yeah, so let's consider first what is AZ login. So it's kind of uh, another CLI provided by Microsoft. So if you want to do AZ login, you have to install the AZ CLI in order to just Google like how to install uh, AZ log AZ login. You will get an AZ, AZ CLI. You have to install that first. Then you have to do AZ login. So once you do AZ login, what happens is you, you get a Microsoft uh, PowerShell MFA prompt. You enter into you. You put your Azure portal logins. Uh, so once you enter that, uh, what happens here is you can list all your uh, Azure subscriptions. So in a in a normal scenario, what you will see is you will see like only one subscription. But if you see if you read about uh, cloud adoption frameworks and 
uh, we call it as CAF. It's kind of a fancy word like, do you have CAF in your environment? Do you have CAF implemented in your environment? It's becoming kind of a fancy word that do you have uh, proper subscription planning? Do you have proper management group planning? Do you have proper hub and spoke uh, architecture in your environment? So maybe in one word you can ask this as do you have a cloud adoption framework properly architected in environment? So what Microsoft is saying is if you are implementing uh, any new architecture in your environment, Microsoft is providing the CAF design, like cloud adoption framework design and best design principles. So in best design principles, what they are saying is you have to have multiple subscriptions for your business units. You have to have dedicated subscriptions for uh, on your hub unit. So I'm not going to go in detail on CAF, but that's why you have multiple subscriptions. Uh, so that's a short, uh, explanation of why you see multiple subscriptions. So when you see in AZ login, when you have multiple subscriptions, you can see you're uh, working on this subscription business unit one, for example. Let's consider if you want to switch your uh, subscription and work on a different subscription. Uh, so let's do that. Let's let's consider I want to switch to a, a different subscription and I, I say AZ account set if and if and subscription and let's consider I want to work on business unit two, for example, then I just use this and I switch my subscription. So if I do like this again, AZ account list, if and O, table, if and if and all, if I do this, I switch my uh, subscription. If you see here, I, I was switched my subscription. So if I'm going to run any sort of Terraform commands, uh, now the deployment will be happening on this subscription. So I, I'm talking in very basic terms because uh, I think this will be a starting point because after when you go into a proper DevOps model, you can interact with multiple subscription. You can deploy with multiple subscriptions in the same time. Uh, I'm not explaining this uh, today, but what I'm saying is uh, as a starting point, if you have a lab environment or if you, even if you have a, a test subscriptions. Uh, ideally, you have to list your subscriptions and you have to move yourself to your test subscription and make sure uh, you are in the test, test subscription so that you can uh, deploy this uh, Terraform or if you're testing any code so that you are affecting only on that subscription so that you're not moving away to any other subscription. Okay. And if you want to uh, log out uh, from your AZ login and if you want to uh, move out, uh, so if you want to move out, what you will do is uh, if you do AZ log out hyphen hyphen username and you will put your email address, uh, whatever the email address you are using. So you can log out from AZ. I'm not log going to log out now, so I just come out. Okay. So as I said earlier, now you have the subscriptions. Now you have, uh, now I know that uh, which subscription I am working on. So I know that uh, Terraform. Now let's move to Terraform. Okay. So you just download the Terraform exe uh, to your, uh, it'll be a small exe file, just Google like Terraform download, you will get a Windows form. Uh, every operating system has its own uh, methods, but let's cover Windows today. So you just download this exe file and put into uh, C Terraform folder, okay? Then you go to your uh, system properties. Uh, so as Hussam said, like I'm using like sys uh, dm.cpl so that we can choose the environment variables. So if you go here and uh, path, if you just go here, I'm just saying my Terraform is in C slash Terraform. So I'm do, I did that. So if you go here, C Terraform, my exe here is here. And also if your Terraform versions need an upgrade, it's so simple. You just replace this exe or you can do an auto upgrade. It's so simple. It's just simple CXE file. That's the exe is responsible uh, to interact with the system. So also once you do this, it may require a restart for a Windows operating system. Then you do a Terraform version, for example. Uh, it means like I'm running Terraform v1.02. This is released uh, recently. Uh, it's, it has a lot of good features. Uh, and also now uh, what we have what we have covered is like we know the subscription. We have listed the subscriptions and we know what subscription we are working on and we have the Terraform is ready. OK, so that is done. So let's go back. Uh, to the slides, OK, 
So now we know what is AC login, AC modules login, and we know how to list the subscriptions, and we know, and we know how to switch subscriptions with the subscription IDs, and how to install Terraform, uh, which is also we covered, and we also know how to add this environment variable on the Windows operating system. Then you restart, or uh, then you just run the Terraform iPhone version on your Visual Studio terminal. Then it just it just makes sure the Terraform is installed and ready. Okay. So coming back to uh, Visual Studio Code, uh, what it's kind of uh, it has its own extensions. So if you go to your extensions and you can search for Terraform extension, it is already installed. Maybe you have to Terraform and it will ask you to install. So what this extension do is. Uh, if you're when you're writing uh, any basic uh, Terraform commands, if if it's not in the proper syntax or if there is any error, it will just highlight it for you so that you can fix it easily. So which is also a good thing uh, for any starter. This uh, Terraform extensions is uh, really helpful. So coming back to uh, Terraform init plan apply destroy. So Terraform works on this uh, four stages. So when you initialize uh, it's you you initialize the terraform and it creates kind of a local state you know so i you would have seen a bit earlier that i was trying to delete some state files so let's 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 dig deep on that so that we understand uh, in it uh, plan apply and destroy so what in it does is if you're planning to initialize it creates a local state file and if you're planning to uh, plan, it's kind of iPhone and what if in your PowerShell. For example, it will not apply, but it will tell you what will happen if you're going to apply. And you apply, it means you're applying the command. And if you destroy, it's like whatever is in your local state file. So let me explain more on the local state file. So uh, when you initialize, for example, let, let me initialize. OK. So let's consider I do a uh, Terraform in it. So I have uh, like in a TF files. I'm not explaining now what is this TF file. Let's consider I have some TF files. I have some TFR files. Then I just do in it, you know. So what this uh, in it is that doing is it will just uh, a second. Yeah, so I'm not in the right folders, so I have to go to Azure resource group. So I'm just browsing into this uh, resource group. Then I do a Terraform in it. OK. So let, let's go through the, go to this file so you can understand what it's really doing. So I'm, I'm into this folder. So if you see uh, C scripts resource groups, I'm in the same folder. So let me do Terraform in it. OK. So what it's doing is it's it's downloading all the required uh, binaries for Azure and it's installing. Uh, it's making sure the Terraform exe is available and it's initializing uh, to have an healthy backend. It's kind of we cannot say it's a database uh, in Terraform. We call it a state file. So whatever from here now, whatever you're going to create through this Terraform system, through the, through this Terraform code, so it's going to store that I'm I have created like five resource group. I have created five virtual machines. I have created like uh, uh, XX uh, things on Azure. I have created XX things on AWS. Whatever I'm going to create, it's going to store that in the uh, in the state file. Okay. In a production environment, what we will do is they will not do they will not be doing this in a in a local state file. Uh, so let me go into resource group. If you see after initializing, you will see some extra files. Uh, so what it has created a state file. OK, the, you will see some uh, state files getting created. So initialization is done. So let's consider I do. So I said it's kind of a four stage uh, things, right? So I do Terraform plan. So it's kind of a what if uh, on, being done on a Terraform or like PowerShell. OK. So let me run Terraform plan. So in this uh, set of code, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to populate uh, one resource group. OK, so. 
So before going there, uh, I will say Terraform plan. I said kind of what if in PowerShell, it's not going to apply, but it's going to say that uh, what will be done in this environment. So what will be done is one resource group, one to add. So what I'm doing is I'm creating one resource group. So okay, so let's let me cover init plan, and then I will explain what is TF files and TFR files. Okay, so. Now I now uh, I hope you guys understand what is initializing. It's creating the local state file. So when I do plan, it's going to tell that what is going to happen with this set of code. So it's it's not going to change anything. It's not going to destroy anything, but it's going to add one resource group for me. So if I do apply, so what it will do is it will create uh, this resource group for me. Okay. Supply that. So let let it get applied. Okay. Let's come back to that. I thought it will create uh, quickly. Yeah. So yes. So what I'm say, what it's saying is it's it's asking to confirm. So I say I want to add. Can you confirm? So I say yes. Okay. It's getting applied. It's getting created. So if you go to uh, So let's let me go to Azure portal. OK. OK, so you go to resource groups. Yeah, if you see this, this resource group uh, created in business unit two, as we specified on the AZ commandlets, and uh, we just ran this code. So let's consider I want to destroy this resource, destroy this resource group. So I'm just giving you an example. So this is just one resource group, but in a in a typical lab scenario or a consulting scenario or uh, testing or creating. Uh, some kind of a huge lab to test some scenarios. It will be like five virtual machines or five app gateways or five Kubernetes clusters. You can do almost uh, do anything if you want to uh, populate and destroy it, then test it again. You know, that is one thing. OK, so let's destroy this environment. For example. So it's getting destroyed. So what it's going to destroy is. Uh, let's see here yeah, it will destroy the resource group. So it's saying uh, when I say destroy, I'm going to destroy one and I'm going to destroy this resource group. I'm going to destroy the resource group in this subscription. OK, so say yes. OK. So that resource group will be gone now, so. OK, so. Now I hope you guys are clear that in it is creates a local state file or it's going to store whatever you're going to do it. When you do plan, it's going to say what is going to happen in the environment. Are you OK to do it? Uh, then you are sure that your planning is good. Then you apply. It means you're applying the changes. Then you test whatever you want and then you if you don't want the environment you want to save money in a consulting point of view you just destroy the environment okay in a devops environment this uh, local state file will be on a storage account uh, it will not be stored on your local system so that because this is your brain of your environment right so you will not be storing in your local machine if you're using with azure devops so as a starter you will not go into azure devops but you will create local state files you will play with local state files you will destroy uh, you will create destroy you can do almost do anything then but the advanced stages you will be storing this uh, local state files uh, into the storage account so you can do apply this versioning you can do backups and also let's consider uh, some people are implementing Terraform on a new environment. What Terraform supports is Terraform supports uh, import modules, which I will be saying in the next slides. So when you import, what you can do is you can take an existing infrastructure and you can implement like import uh, into the Terraform states. 
because uh, it was not created uh, using terraform so it means like if you want to implement terraform in a new environment it's also uh, terraform supports uh, such uh, things okay so now you know installing terraform now we know in it plan apply and destroy and now, local state is for your local machine whenever you initialize on local system your all your brain of your terraform are uh, stores on the local disks when you on an enterprise environment you put this all these state files on a storage account uh, not on your uh, local disk so you use the when you store on your local disk it's it's called as local state when you store it on your storage account and when you use through devops you can call it as a remote state so that you are making sure your remote state is already always available it's backing up it has proper versioning and also uh, okay so let's discuss a few things on remote state corruption and few disadvantages of terraform so all this time i was telling about the positive side of terraform but we have to be clear on what is the uh, disadvantage of terraform okay so so that we are aware on what what this uh, really does and what it what see complications or what is the disadvantages of terraform okay <clears throat> so in arm templates and uh, i was telling microsoft is providing arm templates in the in, in the initial slides uh, arm templates bicep so the advantages of uh, arm templates and bicep is like it doesn't create any sort of uh, state files so it's kind of you 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 run those uh, files and this files doesn't uh, store anything it just applies on the environment and you populate the environment it it does not store anything but uh, what terraform does is it's storing your state file so if something bad happens to your state file so but in some scenarios uh, terraform uh, state files even gets corrupted you have to uh, do revisit the state files and you have to uh, maybe back restore from backup you know you have that one complication but it doesn't happen usually in the new versions but it's something you have to know the advantage and disadvantage that arm templates and bicep doesn't have any sort of state files uh, so so if you change something you really don't have a backend on uh, on arm templates or bicep but in terraform you always have a you have a backend and you have to take care of something which is the state files okay and also the other uh, disadvantage of uh, terraform is let's consider microsoft is releasing uh, even though microsoft and terraform have a very healthy partnership now but still when microsoft uh, is creating some kind of uh, new technology let's consider azure firewall uh, premium is releasing uh, uh, tomorrow or it came online you cannot test that with terraform because terraform will take uh, terraform ashi ashicorp by terraform this company will take its own time to build the modules for azure firewall premium preview or if the product so so we have to wait on that so that is one of the disadvantage on azure uh, on any sort of preview products or any sort of newly released products you may not uh, see terraform modules but like most common modules like all the products uh, terraform has modules on all cloud most of the things terraform supports it but the advantage is like let's consider you are you have taken the decision in your environment that i will never use gui my whole devops team will use uh, terraform uh, through devops and implement this in my infrastructure uh, we can take this decision at this point but it will come with a price on there are certain things you cannot implement you have to wait on terraform so that is the disadvantage microsoft is seeing maybe when it comes to bicep uh, arm templates are are ready from day one and any time you can take bicep and convert this arm template and use it on day one on any product but when you are implementing terraform you you gain this uh, you get this disadvantage that new released released products uh, you cannot use it but you gain the advantage of multi cloud uh, that you can interact with any cloud provider at any point of time and you are more flexible so so i hope this is clear that you take the multi cloud advantage and and you have a state file to manage 
but ARM template, BICEP don't have state file, but they don't have a real multi-cloud support in order to provision things. You know, so this is the gray area. You have to decide on what you really need. You like you are a company like state of the heart then that you implement on day one that any product release on Microsoft. So it totally depends on how your strategy works and uh, how your uh, impact, how is your impact on if you don't implement uh, something which is not, uh, you know, you got the point, right? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. OK, so uh, creating resource groups using Terraform, which I, I just showed you. So recreating local state. So let's consider if you want to uh, recreate the local state. OK, so what happens here is. So let's re will you do. Let me show you something. Okay. So Terraform state list will show you something. Uh, kind of a local state if you have a now I destroyed everything, but if you have something created what it will show you the state and you can delete the state or if you're simply playing with the Terraform and it's a dirty way of uh, deleting the uh, state files as you go here and you just uh, take off all these files. It means your uh, state is gone, right? So. So this is how. Uh, it's like deleting the state file and you can create something new if you want to do that. Uh, if you are if you are like midway and if you want to try something out, if you want to clear the state file and then you start with new, you can do that. OK, that is one thing. And uh, you know how to recreate the local state now. OK. And uh, yeah, so let's work. Let's explain or uh, Terraform TF files and TFR files and modules. OK. So coming back to the code which I was running, it was the most simplest code you can ever find. And I'm not explaining any sort of uh, advanced code, but I will show you something which I am using just for fun. OK, so what I am doing is here is so we can first is if you have TF files, in the same folder, you can put uh, any tf uh, dot tf files. Terraform will recognize as uh, Terraform files, and it will see it as a single form of code. You know, but for better understanding, I am just putting in different files. So even if I am going to copy paste uh, this providers and main tf in a single file, it's going to work. Okay, but for better understanding, I am splitting this so that you have uh, more understanding. Okay, so the first is main.tf file. So what I'm here doing is uh, I'm using a resource and just I'm putting a name for that uh, this uh, function. OK, then I'm using main. This is just a standard template. If you just uh, I'm just you showing you for. Uh, uh, for resource group, but as soon as you you Google and you can get any templates for any product on Azure at this point. So let's consider I'm using the same resource. Uh, the name and the example just uh, you can put main and the name of the resource group. I'm not in specifying any location in this. OK. So I'm just using resource and this I'm putting main. OK, so here in this line, what I'm doing is I'm just using a variable. So variable in the sense. I can use I can put the resource group name here itself and populate this and make it work, but. Why I'm putting a variable is Let's consider you have like five to six virtual machines and if you have like five to six app gateways, it's always recommended that you use variable. There are so many methods I will explain you shortly, but what happens here is I'm using a variable here. OK, then I go to the variables file and I will say. What is my AC resource group value is so what I'm saying is where dot this is my variable. OK. Then in this file, I'm saying my variable value is. Azure 365 Pro, for example, OK, so what I'm saying is if I'm if you're going to have five to six or more folders and more files, it's always good to have a variable file and you declare everything on the variable file. So when you when you want to change something on your environment, you don't have to dig your all your folders and files on a more advanced scenario so that you always uh, prefer to it's, I will not say preferred because it has various scenarios. 
so it's it's good for this scenario what i'm talking that i'm declaring the variable in the variable file and uh, i'm populating this and i'm so when i'm going to apply on this folders so what it's going to apply is it will go into this folder it takes the variable file and say my variable value is this and it's going to use this uh, tf file okay and i'm going to create a resource group what is my resource group location is east us so even if you want to populate this east us in the in the variable file you can move that you know but i want to show you that you can put this on the in this function and you can declare it here or you can put a variable and you can bring the variables into a different file uh, or the, you have one more method that you don't have to declare anywhere you can sub, you can use something called a tfars file so that let's consider you build a set of code okay like 5 to 6 uh, uh, products you have already built so each environment maybe you will say a uh, vm name is xxx and you will put like five virtual machines and you will just put the names and uh, kubernetes cluster names you can maintain a tfars while to populate the environment so so as i said you the first thing is also this provider so in this uh, example i'm using azure rm provider so even in this provider you have options so let's consider you have built a production ready code in devops for uh, 0.15 in terraform and you have tested this code so in that case you will specify in the provider saying that run this on only on this version of terraform if not fail you know so in this i'm saying whatever i'm not specifying anything so it supports the latest versions as it's a test code i'm not specifying anything also you can interact with uh, an azure ad a uh, service principles and it supports that also but let's discuss on the basic topics on providers i'm using azure rm provider i'm not specifying anything so it's using the latest uh, azure rm uh, terraform versions i'm not restricting anything in the main tf i'm just putting a simple variable uh, var dot uh, this one and i'm specifying this and then in the variables file i'm specifying the variable so even you can remove the whole variable file and you just run with only this two uh, files it's going to succeed so but i want to explain you all the options that you can keep this two files and bring this variables to a variable file or remove this and take this to a tfars file you know so so three ways actually it's four ways okay so first is the variables you you specify the variables here you spe you specify the directly the value here or you bring the value out to a variable file to have a neat management uh, one more step you can remove the variables here and take it to a tfars file uh, so that you can maintain kind of a reusable code you know so if you are using tfars file and if you have like multiple folders you use only the file tfars file so you can run like this i'll show you this instead of running a tfars file so you will run like this when you do plan you will specify the tfars file so it will not reuse your you will not use your variables file it will use your tfars file and apply the code so let's consider you are a consultant and if you want if you have a proper healthy code then you will ideally use a tfars file you know so that Uh, let's consider i will put a tfars file i will have like 5 to 6 uh, machines names then i change every environment i change things you know so that's how uh, it's a it's a good feature you know so azure devops terraform modules is like it's it's kind of uh, you build a reusable code in set of folders and it's a advanced topic i'm not explaining on this session and azure devops with terraform which i already uh, explained that uh, you have you create a remote state you have a, st a storage account and you have uh, store the state file in the remote state and you run the devops so i want to explain that quickly so what you create a in a devops methodology what you will do is in in pipelines maybe you will use terraform and what you will do is you will uh, run this task so what you will do is you will do init uh, and you will do plan 
but you will not apply maybe you, you will send this for an approval you know and after your approver approves uh, that this is the set of changes happening in my environment in my environment then you apply the code you know the so the next uh, set of pipeline will run like terraform in it and apply the code you know so this is the uh, type of flexibility and i feel this is this is a future you know maybe it, it would be terraform or it could be a much more matured infrastructure as a code but at this point terraform is i see we see is one of the best product in the market to achieve this like to a, to a state of 98 to 99% so that is it uh, from my end guys uh, so if you have any questions uh, please do ask it in the chat uh, so that we can go through that okay thank you satish, thank you, satish. Uh, yeah and yeah this and is yeah. a reminder for everyone uh, to send us questions about uh, the topic of today's session and uh, we will uh, spend the next few minutes covering that make sure that you also check and follow the module that uh, i shared with you in the meeting chat this is um, a module that they sh has recommended uh, for you to continue the journey after uh, the session and not uh, like stop learning. Uh, in fact, there are lots of learning modules uh, on Microsoft Learn that can be beneficial for you. And also you can uh, use uh, Satish's blog, uh, Azure uh, 365pro.com uh, as a reference and um, you know, uh, have a have a look at all the uh, content that Satish is uh, actively producing and sharing uh, on his technical blog. Hope the uh, session was informative, uh, guys. If you have any doubts or any clarification or any sort of thought process, uh, just put it on the chat. So here's a question. Um, could multiple users have access to one state file? Uh, the short answer is uh, no. So that's why when, when uh, DevOps runs, it, it locks the state file and writes things, then it releases the state file. So even when DevOps, uh, even if, if you use the same state file and if you run multiple uh, DevOps things on that, so it's going every each process will lock the state file and it will do the changes and uh, then it releases the state file. So it, it's always one, but yeah, everyone can have access, but when you run it, it's going to store it only, only one guy can apply changes on it at one at one point of time. So what are the alternatives uh, in Azure tool in Terraform? So yeah, so in Azure, as I said uh, earlier, like you have ARM templates. So ARM templates is really flexible, but it's too complicated to handle because it's using the native uh, JSON technology. Uh, so it's kind of too complicated to troubleshoot when you miss a double quotes or when you miss a comma, it's extremely complicated that where you missed it and how to uh, bug fix it it's very hard so that's why microsoft came up with bicep bicep is really getting like mature microsoft investing on bicep like very hard and it's becoming like matured like uh, so fast so that is there so bicep is there bicep is the alternative but terraform is it's it's more simple man you know you should try it you should try it in, in any non developer background or developer background it's it's for all you know so this is what we are seeing. Yeah. Thank you for your question, uh, Maxim and Abdul. Yeah. I took over the screen sharing to um, remind everyone that uh, these are the channels and um, the YouTube channel as well, where they can find uh, all the content that we're um, recording here at the reactors and also connect with us on social and meetup is our main uh, platform for uh, all the community members which they can uh, take part register for events and and find all the upcoming happenings 
the reactor email um, is a newsletter. That's the fourth link there in the slide. Uh, this is a monthly uh, newsletter where we share all the interesting happenings in the uh, local or regional, I would say, reactor. Uh, so you'll get um, an, a version for Europe, a version for um, Middle East and Africa, and a version for different parts of the world. So you can select on that page uh, which ones you would like to uh, be uh, notified about their events and happenings, and that will uh, get you one monthly reminder in your email of all the interesting uh, live sessions that are happening. So make sure that you are subscribed also um, and, and not miss any of our upcoming sessions. Speaking of the MIA series, um, I'm waiting for more questions to come um, and, and, and I will draw some um, reminders maybe to the MIA series where we're going to continue folding in more uh, sessions into the series and uh, the details are uh, confirming and having conversations with uh, different uh, speakers and Azure community leaders across the region to uh, have them speak as part of the media series which today's session is part of. Uh, so expect more uh, happening, expect uh, to uh, see more on the series page and on the uh, YouTube channel. Well, I think, all right, here is a question. Um, it was saying, are there any tools for converting Azure Blueprints into Terraform scripts and vice versa? Uh, up to my knowledge, uh, no, the answer is no, but uh, definitely I have to double check this, Iqbal. But uh, so as far as my uh, experience, I, I never seen any scripts so far. What we have seen is uh, ARM templates, to bicep is what we are seeing, but uh, I haven't seen blueprints to Terraform scripts uh, yet. Yeah. All right, I think that that's all right. Thank you for the clarification, Iqbal Singh. And yeah, I would like to thank you, uh, Satish, for joining us today on behalf of all the members and the community uh, in the reactor. Uh, it's always uh, great to have you here with us and uh, to learn from your experience. It's also good uh, not for uh, professionals in this uh, domain to attend such sessions, but also to, to people who are trying to explore new areas and new domains and what are the trends and what are the latest technologies updates uh, that are happening. And this is one of the interesting things that we're trying to do here at the reactors and also in the MIA series where we're hosting um, different um, uh, leaders uh, and technology professionals to speak about all what is happening in their uh, fields. So this is a good way uh, for anyone. So feel free to share it with anyone who's trying to figure out interesting uh, domains and interesting ways to um, explore new technologies and new tools and so on. So the series is, 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 is also partially aimed at enabling this uh, to happen. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for spending your valuable time with us. We definitely respect that and thank you for the usual support from the community. Yeah. Yeah, so we have one more question for finishing. Is there any, can you share more light with uh, regards to the module? Yeah, so when we say modules, uh, what happens here is, so let me, so when I say modules, it's like you will have a, let's consider a Terraform init plan, apply, I'm, do, I'm doing that, but let's consider I want to build an app gateway module. And so that let's consider app gateway releases some set of features. You don't uh, play with the whole code. You know, you, you play with only the modules. Maybe in the future you might have a app gateway Terraform expert or app gateway Microsoft expert, you know, so that he works only on the app gateway module. So any new feature comes to the environment, he works on that module without affecting the whole code. And the same set of module can be used on multiple repositories, you know, so, so that's the advantage. And so modules like that's modules with the 
pure concept of reusable code you know so when you use modules uh, it's a huge topic because you have to take output from the modules and you have to bring input uh, to the input to your first well maybe it's kind of an advanced session which i would like to cover uh, later but uh, yeah this is the simplest explanation i could uh, give is there any link uh, between yaml script and terraform in devops so what we have seen is yaml files is you know it's used only on the kubernetes deployment azure kubernetes service deployment we are seeing a lot of yaml files uh, then you use uh, terraform uh, to push this so but is the, there is no direct link but in devops you have for to interact with kubernetes you will use yaml files but if you want to populate the infrastructure you use terraform so what about ansible puppet in azure so puppet is kind of the old king so i cannot challenge i cannot say puppet is bad or ansible is bad definitely they are uh, really healthy products but what we are seeing is uh, even microsoft is recommending uh, terraform in some places uh, in order to populate azure infrastructure and we have a, they what i i personally see is a very healthy relationship and whenever microsoft product releases terraform uh, comes up more faster than uh, ansible or puppet uh, this is what we are seeing maybe ansible and puppet can achieve this uh, achieve the same thing what terraform can achieve but terraform is much more simpler I worked with Puppet in the past, uh, but what we see is Terraform. Even people coming from the non-developer environment uh, can understand Terraform and start using in like one two weeks. Is what we are seeing. Puppet is not the uh, same scenario. If people are coming from a Linux background, Puppet is more easy to understand. Is in my experience. Yeah, but I, definitely I should. I know I, I cannot say Puppet or Ansible is bad. That's what I'm saying. But uh, definitely it's. Uh, terraform is more simpler is what i'm seeing uh, abdul and the other question is if all devops team are using arm templates with pipelines as no issue with validating validation json and debug deployments will we have any profit with the redesign approach of terraform so what we are seeing maxim is like let's consider if you're using arm templates and if you're happy with arm templates you don't terraform does not bring any value to you to be frank but what happens here is if you're a company uh, and if you're planning for a good multi cloud strategy and if you're planning if you want to reuse the same set of code on multiple clouds practically it's not a simple lines as i said you know it's it's too complicated the lines what i'm talking that you build some terraform set of code and start interacting with multi cloud it's it's kind of a most complex topic but the short answer is it will not bring any value but if you are already using arm templates and if you don't see any need of multi cloud provider i would definitely ask you to look for bicep to simplify your arm templates uh, but terraform will not uh, give you any advantage in this scenario yeah that's the answer maxim all right i think that was the last question that we had from the community members uh, thank you again uh, everyone for attending uh, today's live session uh, the session is recorded and it will be available on microsoft reactor uh, youtube channel so check that uh, out uh, later on um, in the next 24, 48 hours, let's say, uh, to recap, review it, and also share it uh, with your uh, friends and colleagues that may have not been able to attend it on the live. And uh, as always, thank you, Satish, for uh, joining us um, again. It's always a pleasure having you uh, with us here, speaking to the community of the Reactor about all the latest uh, technology uh, updates and tools and how they can uh, improve uh, their uh, uh, workflows and, 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 and um, uh, understand all these uh, trending um, uh, concepts with the infrastructure as a code and everything around uh, the Terraform. So thank you and uh, looking forward to having you later and in your future, hopefully. Thank you, guys. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you, guys.